and the most dangerous monster that there is is the one in your head. Yep. Because you can be more self-sabotaging than any person that you're going to run into. And I feel I feel like women have this worse than men because they're probably more honest with themselves um, because I think most men uh, get out of the shower and uh, look in the mirror and go, damn, you're a good-looking guy. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. <laughs> that is just you. All of the food we eat and much of the clothing we wear comes from plants and animals that are raised on farms. Farms are different in type, in size, and even in name. Welcome to Barn Talk. What happens at the barn stays at the barn until now. We're going to let it all out for you guys. Today, we uh, it's a solo episode. Just Dad and I, no guest. Next week, we're going to do a Q&A, so drop your questions down below. If you guys get any value from the show at all, share it out with your friends, share it out with your family, share it out with your coworkers. We're trying to grow this thing. We're trying to do some good in this world, and it's kind of your ticket to admission of listening or watching the show. Uh, we don't run ads on the show, so it's kind of a value exchange. If you get value, we all we just ask in exchange is you give us value in, in sharing the show. So it's kind of our it's kind of our deal. Um, I'm joined here with my co host other host, my pops. The host with the most. Well, maybe quite a bit. Torque. AKA Torque and More. Yes, right. Um, thanks for thanks for your support. Um, thanks for the comments. Um, today uh, we're we're a little we're an AM we're an AM recording this morning because it was just so stinking hot yesterday that we decided we'd get up and do it. Uh, do it early in the morning so that's why we're so bright eyed today yeah it's awfully it's awfully hot it's we starting to get so damn hot this in the morning like yesterday was just we were gonna record yesterday but then it was just so damn hot at like nine o'clock so we were like oh boy so we'll have to do it t- tomorrow which is today and yeah in the in this world time doesn't matter because we can make we can make any time be the right time right for barn talk for you guys we can do we'll make it work we'll get an episode out for you guys <laughs> one thing i wanted to address before we get started because i know you're looking at me a little funny right now over there you guys i got this big old i don't know what this is it looks like a scratch so what happened was my girlfriend loves popping zits i don't know if any of you out there have the same problem your wife your girlfriend What's up with the women loving popping zits? I don't know. Anyway, I had a zit on my face. It was a really deep kind of zit. It was big. And she tackled me to the ground and just went to town on that thing. And now it's just, there's a big old scratch looking thing on my face. I hope it doesn't scar over, but I just wanted to get that out of the way so people don't. Are you in an abusive relationship? maybe is this a cry for help do i need to get somebody needs to help me i'm just kidding she didn't tackle me or anything i kind of let her do it so um yeah it's i just wanted to get that out of the way we don't have any makeup uh people on the set so we can't look all beautiful all the time we don't have a makeup department i was listening to a podcast yesterday uh that the all-in podcast um and i would highly recommend it especially so last week our topic we had Michael Roberts on, and we talked about what's going on in Afghanistan, and we're going to touch on that a little bit today. Because um, there's been some updates. Yeah, I mean, there's more going on there. But anyway, they, they had a real good show about it, and, you know, in, through the process they were talking about, they have six people, six people that that basically edit and produce and post-production and all that, their podcast, which these, the, the guys that are on that, they, they can afford it. They're, they're very, they're very successful, but, uh, our staff, uh, we're hiring, but the benefit package is, is pretty low, pretty low, pretty so, low right now. So anyway, I get some damn sponsors, but we don't have makeup. Yeah. It's just dad and I, <laughs> we're, we're trying our best here. So harvest is near around here. So, um, 
I'd say there'll be some people, I bet you there'll be people trying to do some corn in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like our corn on corn ground is drying um, fast, drying faster than the bean ground. And we were really dry. We, we were, we were really dry a week ago. And in fact, the beans, they were starting to look kind of tough. Um, and then we got, we got a big rain, uh, I don't know, about four days ago, probably. Um, and that, I mean, that pretty much we're that good to go. Nice. That was really nice, especially for the beans. But so the corn, it perked up a little bit, um, but it's drying down and, um, everything is, is moving in that direction. And, uh, I made the decision to sell all my old, uh, crappy Parker wagons and, um, there's an auction coming up. Um, I think the I think the 8th of September that we're selling them. And I thought, well, yeah, I'll get rid of them. And then I'll find, uh, another, like a Brent 657. There'll be one at an auction. And, uh, guess what? I haven't found, I haven't found any. I'm going to have to really start scrambling this week and, uh, call around because I need at least one more, um, harvest i've got two 657s and i wanted to get one more and i didn't think it was going to be a big deal but it's kind of turn it's kind of turning out that used good used wagons are few and far between so anyway we'll get that figured out um i'll give you the market update so this is the close for friday and um corn at adm in cedar rapids actually had the high bid 656 and 613 uh, maybe 615. I forgot to I forgot to check on that, but um, locally about 613. Soybeans 1376 at Muscatine and 1348 locally. I threw a wheat bid in there because we I, haven't ever talked about wheat. Yeah, well, there isn't much wheat production in right. the state of Iowa, no. but um, it's kind of been on a roll because so the September contract for wheat closed at 718, which is pretty. If you got it, I think that's a pretty good price. Um, hogs for October, hogs 91. So a week ago, I think they were like 80, 86 maybe. So they're working up on that new month that they went into and not much change there. Cattle, 122. Cattle have been 120 for whatever month you want to look at for, I don't know. Long time. Yeah, all year long. Um, Bitcoin, 49,000. Um so it's it's been floating around trying to get through that fifty thousand mark. It backed off. It got down forty six, and it got past fifty, but then it went back down. Yeah, um, but I think it's just kind of it's kind of consolidating here to the moon, baby, to the moon from there. So uh, Ethereum thirty two hundred. Tesla had a good end of the week, uh, seven hundred and twelve dollars, and Squares two sixty eight. So that is the that is the market, market. update. Kind of impromptu, uh, sponsored by the Mercantile, my wife's store in Washington, and the reason is she doesn't even know she's a sponsor. But you better get your mic out of the way. Oh yeah. Bit. So there you go. So uh, men out there, when you do something stupid and you need to redeem yourself, uh, the the Mercantile on or Mercantile on Marion dot com, you can buy something for your sweetheart online if you need to save your we'll butt. We'll put it. We'll put the link in the description. So if you gotta <laughs> kiss some ass. If you did something dirty, you need to. Yeah, you, need you to can. Make you can. Up. We ship nationwide now, I think. And so she's the impromptu uh, sponsor because I'm pretty sure I used her credit card for the last case of beer I bought. So <laughs> you're just you're you you're trying to make up on your oopsie. Yeah. There so, you go. <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to get on and get something. <laughs> get, I don't think that has quite the same bang for the buck when you yeah, buy something that, from, from your her. wife to give to your wife. Yeah. That's a pro tip. Don't do that. Yeah. If your wife's a florist or owns a gift shop or whatever, don't buy their product to get yourself out of. Hawk. Trouble. Anyway, um, so today's today's topic is, I guess, what we want to call it is fighting the enemy within. And the and the way that this came about was Sawyer and I were talking this week, and we've been we've been trying to line up guests and get get people on, and we've we had some we had some meetings with uh, some people that we work with and talked about you know talking about the future tra- talking about what we're trying to do and it was really good but as we grow this thing um organization is key and we both are very guilty of not being well organized 
And then we had some, we had some uh, electronic malfunctions. Like we, we cut some clips, I cut some clips, uploaded them, and then saved them. And when I saved them to the hard drive, the external hard drive, uh, for whatever reason, they didn't, they didn't save correctly. And there's no real way to get them back for, to use for anywhere else other than I got them up on YouTube to edit there, but to use them for other things. So pretty much I'm going to have to go cut all them again and it's just time. Um, but we were talking about scheduling. We were talking about getting up and getting our hog work done and all the other stuff. And it got us thinking about, you know, really one of the greatest things that you face in any business you're in, if you're self-employed, really, you know, if you're working for somebody else is being accountable to yourself. And so that's where we came up with the idea of the enemy within. And, and there's a lot of aspects of that, you know, friends, family, coworkers, there's, there's plenty of distractions, but anyway, that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with kind of an Afghanistan update. And I'm going to be honest with you. When we started this podcast and kind of this brand, we didn't really ever want to touch on politics, but I feel like it's very important, especially right now that no matter who you are, you got a voice, you got an influence and the way that this uh, country is turned, you know, the where the where we're going as a country, it's a little worrisome. And I think if people start to show other people that they're not alone in the fact that, uh, you know, we're pro America, because I feel like a lot of people that are pro America are just being silent because they don't want to share their opinions because they think they're going to get censored, which you very well could. But it's really important because you want to show people that you know, they're not alone in the, in thinking that. Um, and I think we're not alone. They just want to, they just want you to think that we're alone. They want to divide us. They want us to shut up and just listen and be a sheep, but no more of that shit. We're going to, we're going to touch on it a little bit because I think it's important to get that message out. And I, it's not going to be all about politics. I don't want that to be all about it, but I just think right now in our nation, in America, we all have a voice. We all have an influence. And I think you should use it and go to your local, Go to your local school boards, go to, you know, community meetings, go to wherever you're at and make it stand up for yourself, stand up for your community, stand up for what you believe in, because the government, a government's not going to come and help you. Politicians, they'll tell you they're going to come and help you, but really they don't really do much shit for you. It's all, it's on us. We need to, we need to stand up and fight and have a voice. So, so all the politicians, not to, not to bag on politicians because politicians come from all of us you know everybody that's a politician started out doing something else and then decided to be a politician but the political system that we have and the environment or the culture of politics in this country has gotten so toxic that there aren't enough good people with strong strong backbones to run for political office. I mean, it starts all the way down to your local school board and your local city council and all that. So many of us that work, so many of us that work full-time jobs or own our own business or are farmers, ranchers, you know, welders, plumbers, electricians, we all get caught up in this. We're, We're so busy just trying to make ends meet to provide for our family. And when we come home, I'm, I'm, I don't want to turn on the news. I, I don't care because I don't, I feel like, I feel like when I see a lot of what's going on, it really doesn't give you hope. It doesn't give me hope. I feel like that, um, I, I, and we said this, I just feel like the political system does not have our best interest in mind and their, their agenda is to consolidate power. And what, what you said about standing up for yourself, it's, it's not when, we're not going to be political because I don't feel like this is a this is a left right Republican Democrat. Yeah, it's thing. both sides. We're talking about politicians on both sides. There's corrupt politicians on both sides, and it's like what we talked about the other day. It's like people think, oh, if you if you have one belief on the left and you're mostly a lot of beliefs on the right, you can only be right, and or you can only be left. Yeah. You can't believe anything on the left, or you can't believe in one thing on the left. 
and then believe everything on the other things on the right. You have to be either conservative or liberal. And that's not the way it is. I, I have some things that I uh, believe in on the liberal side of things. And then I have some things that I believe on the conservative side of things, you know, that's fine. And I think that's not a bad thing at all. And I think most people are like that. So really what I, what my viewpoint is today is I'm just tired. I'm tired of the division. So I am, I, I hope we can all get back to a point that we're all Americans first and we're not the group that somebody puts us in first and then American second, because so what's really sad is so many of our elections today we we don't vote necessarily for somebody we vote against somebody so a lot of people's votes they may not like the candidate that is the alternative but they dislike him less or her less so they vote for that person because they really don't like the one that they've got or the other one which that just tells you the lack of good quality people that are running for those positions and and so I'm pretty sure I'm not electable, um, yeah. <laughs> and I would not. I'm not. I am. I wouldn't be good. I just. But people that have that gift of um, working together with differing points of view, we need more people to run for public office that have in their heart that they want to help, help, and not genuinely want to help, not want to end up on the board of some defense contractor because um as micah touched on you know when you get to the top it really doesn't matter i've always said this you can take you can take republicans and democrats at the highest level of government if you throw them in a wash machine and pull them out you can't tell one from the other because they're all they're all they're all there to consolidate power and to make money to make money for themselves anyway uh we'll go on um so after micah was here and thanks to him for being on um, sadly, we had a, a suicide bomber there at the airport, and 13 American servicemen died, which is a sad... Very sad. Uh, it's just a... Deep, consult, deep condolences to, you know, those families and those guys, and it's the ultimate sacrifice, and it's just it's very sad that they shouldn't even have been... If this would have been handled in a whole different way, that that shouldn't even have happened. Which you know? we don't know. I mean, we don't right. know, but we know that this wasn't handled well. And I saw a clip. They were talking. I mean, they were basically asking our president why the Taliban was doing perimeter security. And, you know, on the one hand, he said that nobody trusts the Taliban. We don't trust the Taliban. But it's in it's in their mutual interest with us because they want us out that they're going to do a great job. You know, they're going to we can trust that they're going to do security because they want us out. And I thought that that was just, I thought that was one of the most nonsensical answers by a politician that I'd ever heard. And um, it's just, it's just sad. And this is going off. This is off script a little bit. Cause I, I just heard this yesterday and here's something for you to think about. And this isn't, this is, this is just the world we live in, but you can, we spent $2 trillion. We spent over $2 trillion over there and we're leaving and we aren't going to have anything to show for it except for a lot of, a lot of pain and a lot of, um, a lot of questions about how it was handled. And there's going to be a power vacuum there. And the Chinese are already willing to fill that. And what they're going to do, and you can write this down and come back and tell me, Torque, you're totally wrong on this, and I might be, but my guess is that the Chinese are going to go in there and they're going to invest a pile of money, and they may spend 2 trillion yen in there or whatever, but what they're going to do is they're going to build infrastructure because Afghanistan is has one of the largest deposits of rare earth minerals in the world, and rare earth minerals are all the 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 trace minerals that you use in building magnets and um, in chips, in computer chips, um, they're used in very small quantities, but they're very difficult to get to, and there's very few places in the world that you can get them. And in fact, in the United States, there's only one mine in the United States that has access, one place really that we know of that we can get rare earth minerals. 70% of the rare earth minerals today come from China, and so when you're trying to make 
the next generation uh, chips that are going to be in products for the military, electric vehicles, basically everything that's going to drive the economy in the future. You need rare earth minerals, and we're in really bad we're in a really bad position in the fact that we've got to get a lot of that from China, and China knows that the future for their economy, if they want to dominate, that that's what they want, and they're. They don't have the ethics that we have. They don't care. They aren't going to care about the oppression of women. Well, they just don't care what the Taliban does. They're there to get something, and if it means partnering with them and looking a blind eye to what they're doing socially to get something economically, they're, they're willing, willing to do, do it. it. Yep. And so America is going to get put at a disadvantage, and you really got to ask yourself, you know, why are we doing the things that we're doing? And maybe we should look at things – May, there, we need to play a longer game than what we are. That's yeah, we're so we touched on it in the last podcast. America is so short, short term thinking on yeah. our nation, and China is playing the ultimate long game. They want to dominate. They want to dominate the world. They want to be the number one world power. And yeah, and that that book's not written, but I mean that's what they're working towards. And they've got their own problems. And there's a lot of things that can happen to change that direction. But they're definitely they're they're going to fill that power vacuum for sure. And so. Uh, lots of problems to fix, but we're not going to fix them all here today. So we're going to try. We're going to try to give you. We're going to try to give you some uh, thoughts and tools, maybe to help you with some of the smaller problems. Yeah. Uh, how much? How many uh, billions of dollars of equipment was left, or was it millions? No, it was billions. Billions. Thirty-eight. No, it was like eighty something. Eighty-three. Eighty-three billion dollars worth of equipment. Well, maybe. I I feel like so they said it was over two hundred vehicles. Helicopter. Helicopters. Over 200 aircraft. Aircrafts. Shitload of weapons. 750 vehicles, 600,000 small arms and weapons. So I don't know. So, Whatever. I don't know how many, I don't know how much it was uh, as far as price, but it's just like all this stuff. He, they, we just left all that over there. We didn't blow it up. We didn't grab it. We didn't try to like not give it to the Taliban. They just we just left it, and the Taliban have now have it, and they have a great armory. They have a better armory than they ever had before. And it just it just brings up the question: like, how this is so bad? This was handled so poorly that it's like it almost seems calculated. Like. I just don't, I can't imagine that the people in power could think up a plan this bad unless it was calculated and they did it on purpose. And I know a lot of you are out are there. Are you a conspiracy theorist? Well, if you want to call that a conspiracy theory, whatever, but it's called thinking for yourself and not trusting really what the hell's all going on. Because literally, if I and you and I can think up a better way of handling that, how could they not? How could they not have thought that? Okay. How all this has been handled is just terrible. And here's here's another theory for you. But uh, truly, I do think it's calculated. I think it's handled so bad on purpose. Um, I know that they're trying to spin that Biden is incompetent, incompetent, and he is. But it's for it's for what's coming next. And what's coming next is Biden is going to step down, and Kamal Harris is going to step up. And that was always the plan. I, we've been saying that from the freaking very beginning that Joe Biden's been elected. That is definitely the plan. He's taken all the blame for this. Hell, he might get impeached. Who knows? But Kamal Harris is going to step up, and that was always the plan. And that's my that's my opinion on it because I just can't imagine the U.S. government handling this so poorly. It is so po- poorly done that it it seems almost calculated. I just can't imagine you not knowing all these things. Well, um, we'll go we'll go a little further on this subject. So, in the podcast I listened to yesterday, I, a point that I had not heard that um, came up, which is very plays into what you're talking about, and I hadn't thought about this. But um, so, there's an inspector general that was appointed that keeps track of how the money that has been spent in Afghanistan is spent and reports on basically if it's been poorly allocated, which obviously it's been very poorly allocated. And there's report after report after report that nobody outside of government really ever reads. And it is public. It's publicly available. But anyway, um, in there, they talk about how that um, the military has set, the way they set their goals 
um, they they changed their goals as they were there to make them attainable and to make it look like they were making progress when in fact they really it was just a stalemate. And so one of the one of the ways that they measured their their gain there was by the number of Iraqis that they were getting trained and into military units. And they would have a report every month of how many Iraqi soldiers and that, Afghan or how many Afghan soldiers they had trained. And every month it was more and more and more. And you have to understand that the military promotes from within. And if you're at the bottom, the way you get to the top is the commander that's ahead of you recommends you for a position that comes up, or as they move up, they recommend you to replace them. So it, it is not in your best interest to complain about the orders that you were given, which in turn means that in big picture, when the Joint Chiefs of Staff told Biden that they had a force there of however many hundred thousand Iraqi, or I'm sorry, Afghanis, if you talk to the guy at the bottom of the rung that was actually training those, there's many, many stories where say they trained 20,000 or say they trained 10,000 soldiers in a month, 70% of them were on drugs, or only 50% of them could pass the physical endurance tests. They were literally just rubber stamping these guys. and Because it, it, it made it look And good. they were paying, and we were paying them. We, were, we may not have been directly paying them. We may have been giving money to the Afghan government that was turning around and paying them. So anyway, this went on month after month after month after month. So when it gets to the point that we're going to draw down and the Joint Chiefs to have all this paper that's been generated and it goes up the line from, from this guy to this commander to this commander to this commander all the way up and they're all, they're all rubber stamping it because they don't want to look bad and they're getting it and the guy that's actually doing it, he doesn't want to look bad because there's no chance of him advancing if he says, you know, this is the stupidest thing ever. So we get to this point, and I truly believe that within the administration, they believed that they had an Afghan army that was going to buffer this advance of the Taliban because they had all these people. Well, they had sh- their information was terrible because their army was Trash. a paper. It was a paper army, pretty much. Trash. And as Micah said, um, fear, fear runs it, and we haven't been instilling fear over there for a very, very long time. And no, we gave up on that a long yeah, time ago. And the Taliban have probably started to we, emerge on. Somebody said that we we spend more time. So this is true. Uh, we spend more time counseling um, soldiers soldiers on toxic masculinity than we do on tactics of war because that's what we're all about now in the United States is pronouns. So I'll get down off my box after that. But um, there's so much that goes on that you just you just that's the problem. We don't really know what. At any level of government, we don't know what what's going on. We just don't know. And we don't know why these decisions are made. But I can tell you this, that if Joe Biden ends up resigning or getting thrown out and you get Kamala Harris, nothing changes on that side of it because she is a product of the same machine. And I will say, she's a product of that machine. The Bush family was a product of that machine. Uh, Bill Clinton was a product of that machine. You can argue whether Barack Obama was or wasn't, but I think he's much more connected to it than what you'd think. Um, I don't think Donald Trump was. Donald Trump had a lot of flaws, and he made it hard on himself, and he's not very tactful, but he was an outsider, and I think universally both sides of that, both sides of the aisle resented that man greatly because he wasn't, he wasn't part of ch- page. He wasn't trying to make a... He, he lost more money being the president than he did... Well, I think that's all oh, right, but he wasn't doing it for money. He wasn't doing it for a board seat, and you know, he yeah. was just doing it because he thought it needed to be. He wanted to do good by the country. I think he right. was a businessman. He seen what's going on in the country, and he wanted to do something about it. And yeah. he knows how the systems played. Yeah, and people didn't like that from both sides because they're, like you said, they're getting a check. Right. They're in politics for that seat and for money. Both sides, conservative, uh, liberal, whatever, Democrat. Uh, Republican. 
Well, <sighs> yeah, we've we've done a we've done much more of a rant than what we were going to do. But yeah. anyway, I think you pretty well know how we feel about it, and um, we're going to leave it. Oh at yeah, that. and you know, just to touch on this, um, I think it'd be great if. I am all for a woman president being, I'm all for a woman becoming president. I'm all for an African American becoming president, but I don't, I don't want Kamala Harris being my president. I'd rather have Candace Owens be my president. If we're going to pick a African American lady to become president, I want Candace Owens all day, every day. I don't give a shit what your color is. I don't give a shit what your gender is. I don't care who you're having sex with. If you want to become the president, your if policies, you have the ideas. Yeah. And I think most people are in that category. They want to tell you it's about race. You're racist or you're sexist. Or most you're people don't give a shit about that stuff. We just want to know what your policies are, what you're going to do by the country, what good things you're going to do for the country, and actually do them. That's the key. Actually freaking executing them and doing them. And it's going to take a lot more than a president. It, it that That's why every, you know, I mean, it all comes down to it, it, Every governor matters. Every, and it's not, the thing is, we got to get back to candidate. We've got to get people involved in politics that actually care about the people they're representing. And they're not, they're not there for their own self-promotion. Yeah. And that's very difficult because the machine is, it's so hard to get elected. And you need so many people to help you that you end up with people that are self-serving, that have weak morals, that are willing to bend at every turn to satisfy the person that's writing them a check. And when those people, when they start out as, when they start out as a city council member and they get to state representative, state senator, they get to, they get to the U S Congress, they have bent and bent and bent and bent. And by the time they get to where they're in real power, they are bought and paid for by special interests. And that's the problem we have. I mean, that is the problem every we have. Le- every level up is just another like, and, oh yeah, they and, love it. And I don't know how bad it will have to get before enough people enough people decide that they've had enough. And and it's, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of, this country is going to have to go through a lot of pain, I think, for us to get back back to having a political class that is for the people and by the people because right now it's by the people but it's not for the people so that was good right there oh yeah that should be on a t-shirt boom (laughs) i need a freaking bomb but yeah i just again i just want to say it's important we all have a voice you all have influence in your life go to those go to those meetings go to your community meetings go to those school board meetings stand up for yourself we're, we got 1,700 subscribers. We got, I don't know how many listeners we get on each podcast, but we have a little influence in this world. And we we just think right now it's very, very important to have these conversations. We need to show people that we're pro-America. Most people do think the way that we think. You know, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to be sometimes considered a conspiracy theorist. It's, I don't, thinking for yourself is a good thing. I don't know why people look down on that. They don't want you to think for yourself. I mean, thinking outside of the box is a good thing. And sometimes the way that this system set up, it's like, how could you not sometimes think outside the box a little bit? And I just think everyone's got a, everyone's got a voice and just use it, use it, you know, talk to people and respect your fellow man and respect other people's opinions. Because if we can't sit down across from each other and have a freaking conversation without getting heated, that's a problem in itself. You're getting heated right now. I am. I Fired am getting up. Heated. Those are all the monsters. Those are the monsters in our country right now. So we're <laughs> going to talk about the monsters within. There you go. We're going to talk about the monsters that we all must slay to be successful. There is just a huge weight of negativity around. I feel it. I feel like between this Afghan thing and between COVID and the vaccinations and, and the, the not election, vaccination. The election was stress. I mean, yeah, stressful. It's, it's so hard to have a positive attitude. And I run into people all the time that are very negative, and that, that weighs on you. I mean, it's just, it's, if you're around positive people, you'll have positive thoughts. If you're around negative people, you'll have negative thoughts. And that's, that's something that we've all got to deal with. And we've got to learn that, you know, people that consistently just suck the life out of you you really have to temper, you really have to put on your armor before you, if those are people you have to deal with, you have to be 
before you go into that meeting or before you go to that picnic or before you go to that store or whatever, you have to Put say, okay, I know what this is going to be and I'm ready for it. Yep. Um, yeah. And it's all about, it's all about what you listen to too. I mean, people, there's negative people out there, but what you listen to also big, plays a big factor in that. That's why dad and I really don't watch the news um, because you watch it and it's just, like you said, it's a bunch of just hopelessness comes into you a little bit about just the state of the country and everything. And it's just keep that stuff to a minimum because you got to go about, you got to go on about your day. You got stuff you got to worry about and all you absorb is negativity. Um, yeah. And your outlook's negative. I mean, you got to have a, you got to have hope and you got to have a positive outlook on the future and what's coming for you. And just know that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people and a lot of organizations out there that they prosper off of fear. So I would say that the, the, the media, the media, the national media, they run on ratings. Their ratings go up when there's a national disaster. Their ratings go up when there's political chaos. Their ratings go up when there's a, when there's a pandemic. And, so, guess, and guess what happens when they have a high rating on their show? They get paid. Yeah. I mean, Follow the, the money. The advertising people. dollars go up. All the so, money. I, th- I honestly think, so Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, uh, the New York Times, whatever you want to talk about, their circulation, their rating, their watching, those numbers all go down when things are, the better things do, the worse they do. So just know, I'm not, I don't have my head in the sand. I, I follow the news as far as what's going on, what happens, but I don't sit and absorb um, opinion journalism because they have no interest in anything but doom and gloom. And they're part of what wants to divide us and make us suspicious of our neighbor because they don't look the same way we do or they don't have the same opinion on some certain subject that we have. So anyway, um, but the other, the other side of this is you got to look within. And this is probably my single biggest struggle is for us to get stuff done, for me to get stuff done, I have to, I have to plan it. I have to sit down and actually do it, or I have to go actually do it. And I can't just sit and I can't just sit and scroll on this thing. I can't just sit on my computer and think about whatever on Google and Google that and then go here and end up, I wonder what that costs and go to Amazon and say, oh, well, that's neat or go, you know. Yeah, time management's huge. That's a big, that's dad and I's probably biggest flaw, I'd say. We we have a lot we got to get done, and it's just finding time to do it all is the hardest part, and we don't, we don't do a good enough job planning. That's one of our flaws, and I think the best, most successful people out there have a, they're really good at time management. They're really good at planning out their work, and I don't think you have to be working all the time. Like, if you're just productive for six to eight hours a day, really productive. I mean, you're not getting on your phone. You know, you're not you're not going on Google while you're at work or whatever. You're actually doing four to six hours of really productive work. I think you can have time outside of that then to do t- do things that you want to do. Yeah, but it's all about that productive work, being actually productive. But with that time management, it also comes down to you have to plan, you have to plan when you're not going to be working. So in other words, the time that you have that you're going to say, okay, I'm going to be with my family or I'm going to do this. You have to be purposeful in that, in the fact that, okay, when you're not working and you're with your wife or you're with your kids, don't be on your phone scrolling, whatever, make that time productive also. Like you, I think the difference between the most successful people is that you know, the saying work hard, play hard. And a lot of people use that like party. They're, they're more, they're more about play hard, you know, and they claim they work hard. And then some of them, you know, I'm not saying they don't, but it isn't party that work hard, play hard. It's the same thing as I know a farmer that's got a sign in their shed that says, uh, plan your work and work your plan. So if you're as diligent about how you spend your free time as you are, how you spend your working time, you'll be very productive in both and you'll have a healthy marriage, life. healthy. Yep. You'll have healthy relationships and a healthy work relationship. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good point. One other thing that I really struggle with is really trying to be in the moment when you're outside of your work. 
I, I'm kind of a dreamer a little bit. So when I'm not working, I'm still trying, I still sometimes focus on the future and what I got to get done the next day, but try to limit that as much as you can and really try to live in the moment a little bit, because like dad said, you want to play just as hard as you do work. So when, when you get to that play, play time, play hard time, uh, just try to really be in the moment and really focus on what you're doing as yeah. far as if it's with your girlfriend, if it's with your wife, it's with your kids, whatever, focus on that. Cause you need, you need a healthy balance of all of it to make yeah. your life worthwhile. The next point, and this is probably one of the hardest ones. Well, they're all hard, but you know, we all have people in our lives that we've either grown up with or that we met at different times or are part of our family and their toxic relationships. Um, they're the person that no matter what dreams you have, they are telling you why that won't work. And cr- constructive criticism is good because you need somebody that's grounded to tell you the reasons why something might not work or why you, maybe you shouldn't get ahead of yourself. But there's a fine line there between that and just trying to squash your shit on someone's parade. Yeah. And we've talked about this before too, but you know, there's people in your life that we all, we all love successful people. Americans love to see people be successful. Then they also like to see them get torn apart. They like to see them crash because that makes them feel better about themselves, which is kind of sick and wrong, but we do. I mean, that's just how it is. But, you know, you have people in your life that as you are, as you have successes, they, they will, they will turn a little bit. And by that, I mean, we all love our friends to be successful. We just don't want to be more successful than we are. Yeah. And that's where you can get into some pretty toxic relationships because, you know, when when you're trying to get a job promotion and everybody's like, yeah, you should go for it. You should do that. And then you actually get that job. Well, if you're then what happens when you become people that your coworkers, when you become their supervisor? Well, it's a whole different dynamic. Right. And then it isn't always sunshine and rainbows. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do I want to say this? If you come from the same place as most of the people you hang around with, and then you step out of the box a little bit, they hate that because they see that you came from the same place as them and you're getting success now. They don't like that. It's like, it's, I've said this before. It's like a mirror's looking back at them. When they look at you and you talk about it or they ask you about it and you start talking it's like a mirror reflecting right back at them because if they if they see that you're successful and you achieved it and you're from the same place as them, well, and then they talk internally to themselves a little bit like, well, then why can't I do that? Or he, you know, he's just he's he's lucky or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, so you just gotta. The biggest thing that I would say, and I learned this pretty early on, and it's one of the most just like it's it's foundational in my opinion. You cannot value other people's opinions of you. You really can't. You really cannot value other people's opinions of you. I mean, to an extent, like obviously you want to be known as a respectful person. You want to be a good person to your community. You're nice, you're friendly, whatever. But when people say shit like about crush shit on your parade a little bit about your dreams or what you want to accomplish and they're like, oh, that'll never happen for you. Don't even let it affect you. Don't even let it affect you. And I would say the same thing on if you do become successful and people are always, you know, telling you you're doing a good job or hyping you up, don't let that get to your head a lot either because you're, you're not become, as good as you think right, you are. You don't know everything you're not, and then you'll start getting cocky and then that's how you make mistakes and then that's how people don't like you anymore. So I would just say on both sides of the spectrum, don't listen to people that shit on your parade and then if you do do something really good for yourself and people are hyping you up, don't let that get to your head as much like take it, you know, thank you. Appreciate it. But don't let your head get full of that shit either because it it's not good either way. But that's one of the biggest, that's the biggest thing that I'd say is just, it's, it's a good peace of mind to not value other people's opinions of you. Because if you let that go, which is so hard in this day and age with social media and all that stuff, but if you let that go, you'll have a lot of peace of mind. Yeah. It's all about balance and being true to yourself. And it's very important 
to find people, you know, find your tribe, they say, but find people that you can you can have conversations about honest conversations about what your dreams and aspirations are that are respectful even if even if they may think that those dreams are unattainable they know that they're your dreams and not theirs and they're not going to tell you not going to give you all of the uh reasons why that can never work they're willing to listen um and this that's big for me because honestly there's not very many people that I feel like that I can talk to about all the stuff that we've got going and all the stuff that we want to do without them just giving me kind of the weird look like, what in the hell are you doing? And I mean, let's face it, what we're doing here is pretty, it's kind of, it's odd. It's not odd. Like when you get on, when you get on YouTube or you're on, you're scrolling podcasts, there's millions of podcasts and there's, probably millions of YouTube channels. I don't know how many YouTube channels there are. There's a bunch of them. So when you're, you know, when you're on there, you look at it and you're like, well, yeah, it's not that big a deal. But when you actually step in and you start doing it, it's a pretty small, it's a pretty, it's a kind of a, it's a lone, it's a lonely, I won't, I'm not lonely. I, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm well adjusted, but it's, it's a small group of people yeah, that lonely. you can share that experience with. And People don't understand why you're doing it, and some people think you're doing it for the wrong reasons because they think you're an egomaniac and you want everybody, look at me, look at me. Well, obviously, you know, I've got a face that was made for radio. I, I, I'm sure I, I'm more, I'm prettier on podcasts than I am on the video version of, of this <laughs> podcast. But, it, you know, it, they don't know my why. They don't understand why we're doing what we're doing, and that's okay. They don't have to. But, and, and that's... Whatever you're into, whatever you're trying to do, it's the same way. There, when you get passionate about something, you're going to find there's not very many people that are in your corner. Are in your corner. And it, I will say, once you find your tribe, you find your people you can tell your accomplishments to, or they can give you constructive criticism, or they can give you what they would do in that situation, and not think that you're coming off as a smartass, not think that you're coming off, you know, trying to be cocky, like you're genuinely you know, trying to get advice for them, seeing what they think about it. If you can find those kind of peoples and then they can do the same thing to you too, like they can share their accomplishments with you and then they can ask you questions without them, without you feeling like they're being a smart ass, you know, look at me, look at me. That's a really powerful thing. I'm very, very blessed. Um, I'll just give a shout out to my guys. Um, I have a really good friend group and the fact that I can tell, I can tell them, you know, what's going on in my life without them feeling like, I'm trying to be a cocky dick, which I'm not. I'm just happy. And they can do the same thing to me and I'll be just as hyped for them as they are for me. And also anytime I want, I want, I need advice, I'll go to them or my dad. And if they want advice, they'll come to me and I'll give them my best advice for, that I can give them. And we don't take it the wrong way. And that's so powerful. That is so powerful. You need people that will hype you up that are in your corner and you'll need people that will tell you, you know, this is what I would do in that situation and take it, you know, that's such a, that's a, such a powerful thing. Um, and I would just say, if you find, if you found a f few guys like that, or a few women like that, or a few, whoever you got family, it's like that stick to them because that's, that's a really, that'll get you. It's that it's back to that, um, positive mindset. It's back to that. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not, you're not consuming a bunch of negativity or consuming a bunch of people that are for you and want you to win. That's, that's big. And that's what you'll talk to yourself internally too. If you got everyone telling you, yep, keep going, then inside use yourself. You're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to keep going. You know, that so, is a good tie in yeah. to the, I would call the biggest monster that we all have to slay. And the most dangerous monster that there is, is the one in your head. Yep. Because you can be more self-sabotaging than any person that you're going to run into. And I feel I feel like women have this worse than men because they're probably more honest with themselves um, because I think most men uh, get out of the shower and uh, look in the mirror and go, damn, you're a good-looking guy. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Maybe that is just you. <laughs> Sometimes I do that, but when I got a few freaking huge zit scar on my face, I don't feel that a little bit. But when I've got stuff, I, I feel, I feel it. When I've got stuff that I've got to get done, 
that's the time that I most hear that voice in my head saying, you should, you should go get that's, a snack or you should go, you should go mow phone. or get you should, yeah, do something completely non-productive. Um, you know, and then the voice that says, you know, your alarm goes off at 5 a.m. And you go, well, I don't really have anything I got to do today. Snooze it. Snooze it. Or when you sit down to read something uh, to put positivity in you, the voice is like, oh, just you know, listen this is, to some music. Yeah, let's just listen to some music or what. I mean, you're you're your own worst enemy, and that if you can if you can keep that dragon in check, um, it all starts there. Yeah, it all starts with yourself. And I just say, I heard this I heard this a while ago, but. Um, I, I, I have found in my life when I'm the most disciplined, when I set out, I'm like, okay, I want to go to the gym and work on myself there. I want to be productive in my work, you know, and then I want to read and I want to learn something new every day. And then I also want to have a good relationship with my girlfriend. When I'm disciplined on those things and I achieve all those things, I feel da- pretty damn good. I feel confident in myself. And I think that's how you really start to um, feel just good is when you're disciplined and you do those things, it, it just feels good when you're doing it consistently on a week to week basis, day to day basis, whatever it feels damn good. Um, it's just really hard to get there because there's yep. so many distractions and I've, I've heard this, um, many times, but kind of try to look at your life. Like you're the main character of a video game. Like if you're playing a video game and you, you're making decisions, like, I don't know, like, I don't know if anyone's played Fallout or Skyrim or whatever, but like you're the main character and you got to pick decisions. And y- usually when people play video games like that, they, they always pick, pick the best. They decision. pick the best decision. Like you want your person to be good. So think about your life a little bit like that. Like, okay, would I would w- if I'm looking from a third person view, would I want my character to like sit on my ass and look at my phone or would I want them to go and do what they set out to do? And yeah. it'd be you know, obviously you'd pick, go and do what you set out to do. And once you do that consistently, it's going to feel damn good. So yeah, it's really hard though. I struggle with it. I struggle with it. Dad struggles with it. I struggle with getting on my phone. You know, I struggle and sometimes hit that snooze button. Um, it, 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 it's hard to consistently do it, but I'll tell you, I've, I've had times in my life where I, where I am disciplined and I am consistent and that feels damn good. Yeah. I mean, you think, a Jocko, uh, Jocko will say the discipline, and he's like the most disciplined. If you don't most- know who Jocko is, he's a Navy former Navy SEAL. He trains people. He's got a podcast, yeah. and he's he's a badass. <laughs> he, I don't know anybody more disciplined than he is. Um, but he, his point of that is that the more disciplined he is, he accomplishes so much more, and it. He's so regulated that having that schedule that he knows exactly how every day is going to go because he plans so well, it's freeing and he's to the point where he almost doesn't have to, he doesn't have to worry about it. It's like, it's, it's like a relief that he's so disciplined, which is a really weird thing to get. What's you touched on earlier is I'm sure he's disciplined. He plans out his work and then he plans out his play. Yes. It's not like you got to be disciplined as shit about you know, your work and you got to be a hard nosed mother, you know, you, you can be he plans at all. You can plan it all, be disciplined on your work and your, whatever you're trying to achieve. And then also be disciplined on your plan of like, if you want to take your girl out on a date Friday night, do it, you know, yeah. like if you plan to do it, do it. And that's, and plan so that you've got all of your crap taken care of and nobody's going to call you and there's nothing that you need to look at and you can dedicate your full amount of time to that family member yep. or to that experience and it makes it that much better right um if you if you're lucky enough that you can that you've got people around you like we talked about you know one of the things that keeps me disciplined is Sawyer and one of the things that keeps Sawyer disciplined is me because when we're going to do something and he hits the snooze button do you know who calls him and goes where are you yeah and then I get that uh, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Cause, cause we, so we keep each other accountable. Now, granted, we don't keep each other. We don't always do that because there's plenty of times when yeah, we both hit the when snooze button. We both do, or one of us calls us and goes, D- 
do you really want to do that today? <laughs> and we go, well, no, not really. All right, we'll do it tomorrow. And some things we can do that because we're, we're, we work for ourselves. We work for ourselves, which whatever, but having somebody, and it can be your spouse too. I mean, my wife and I keep, keep each other accountable too on, on what is in that window, but having somebody to help you stay accountable, that's huge because yeah. when you do that, if you've got somebody that it's pushing you. It's pushing you. It, it it's back to helps. people in your corner. You know? Did you find your thought? Yeah. So another demon that I think, or a monster you need to slay to be successful in ourselves is um, trying to be grateful. Something that I really struggle with also, man, I got a lot of struggles and that's, most people are flawed. Everyone's got their flaws. But one thing that I really struggle with is I always catch myself thinking about thinking ahead, thinking about my next move, thinking about what investment I want to make, thinking about, you know, my, my con what content we got to plan out for next week. You know, I'm always thinking about the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And I found that when I'm disciplined and I'm executing and I'm also, I take time out of my day to be grateful for what I have. That is also a really good place to be because it, I think being grateful, and I don't think really people talk about this enough, you have to practice being grateful. Like, because there's times in your life where usually it's tragic times in your life. Something happens to a family member, something happens to your friend or whatever, and then, you know, they get better or they don't, and then it really gives you perspective and you're more grateful for what you have. But what I would encourage people to do is just take time. I do it sometimes when I'm brushing my teeth. I don't, again, I don't, I don't do it every day, but I, I would like to do it every day. You know, um, I just think about the things I'm grateful for when I'm brushing my teeth and it can be something as stupid as hot water, electricity. Cause you know, there's people out there that don't have those things, you know, having teeth to brush, having teeth to brush, having <laughs> toothpaste, you know, just thinking about those things and it'll give you, it'll keep perspective in your life and it'll keep you grateful. And if you're doing that and you're disciplined, you'll feel pretty good about yourself. That is a, that's a good, that is a great spot to finish up the monsters. Yeah. Because my first point of kind of tying it together is that no matter where you're at and how great you think you have it or how horrible you think you have it, if you're alive and walking the earth, you should be thankful. If you're born in America, you should be thankful. Let's be, let's put that right now. Like you are in one of the best countries in the world, even with all this crap going on. I mean, we're all very blessed. We're all blessed beyond measure. And if you, to watch what's going on in Afghanistan, you know, those people, their whole world is up, turned upside down. What, what they've had for the last 20 years up and down, um, they don't, what's coming is not going to be anything like what they've had. And that's just one example. There's examples all over the world. Um, you know, if you've got a house to, if you've got a bed to lay your head down on and you've got a family, you got kids, um, you got people, you don't have to worry about uh, getting shot on your way to work or that you've got, you've got a job to go to and you have food in your refrigerator. You're, you're blessed beyond measure. Life is all about perspective. And it, it, it takes something, like I said, it takes sometimes a tragic event to happen for you to give, get, get perspective on your life. But like, if you guys are wanting, wanting some perspective, I listened to a Joe Rogan pod, podcast with this North Korean woman that escaped North Korea. And what those people uh, experience every day, they're just trying to survive. Literally in North Korea, it is, it is horrible. It's like, Nazi Germany for Jew, for Jews in North Korea. Like I listened to that and it was just really gave me perspective on, man, we do have it really good here because those guys, those women, those men over there, they don't have any ounce of freedom. They, they are just trying to get by every day and survive and not make a mistake because they'll get killed in the streets for it. So, you know, we have, we all have a lot of differences, but we're a lot more alike than what, than what, so much of our society, well, the media and our political system would want you to believe. We're all much, we have way more in common than we have apart. Um, I feel like we, we all need to slow down, and we're guilty of this because, like Sawyer said, we're, we're, we're hustling. You know, we've, we're working on every angle we can. 
Um, but we all need to slow down and, you know, the, the, the YouTube video that came out this week, I talked about my, my account that passed away and he and I, he and I were totally at opposite spectrums of the political world. And I would consider him one of my best friends, uh, professionally and even personally. And you know what? We didn't agree on much on that side, but we agreed on a heck of a lot. Um, just on the, just life, just on life and hobbies and what we like to do, and um, we enjoyed our discussions. We we got some pretty heated discussions, but you know what? That's what it's about. And you know, part of the reason that that was such a good relationship is because we didn't just rubber stamp each other's beliefs. We challenged each other, um, but we did it in a respectful respectful way. And you need to be, you need to be slow slow to anger and slow to judge people and quick to forgive them and if yeah. we can get back to that and it starts with us yep. it starts with us each and every one of us each and every one of us it's it's everyone's got a voice everyone's you know you, you everyone talks to people and just try to find the good in people and if you disagree on things don't absolutely explode on them because that just that just makes everybody look like we can't ever get along if we disagree on things like just respect your fellow man. We always say it. Respect your fellow man, and it's okay if you disagree. And here's the thing. If you disagree with somebody, you might learn something from the other person's side of it. You know? You can learn things. If you if everyone just thought they were right all the time, uh, and you just fight and bicker, and you don't ever like try to respectfully listen to one another, you'll never learn anything. No one's going to ever see your side if you're just exploding on them. So... You can change a person's mind and your mind might be changed if you can if you can listen and be slow to anger. Yeah. The problem that we have in this with this country, and I think I think it's kind of that way everywhere, is everybody's very quick to anger. If you have your position and you're gonna defend it at all costs, you're not gonna change anybody's mind. And the only way that your ideas win is if you can make a majority of people believe those ideas and yelling and screaming and writing people off and telling them they're monsters and that, you know, they don't know is you're not going to change anybody's mind doing that. And we need, we need to be slow to anger and, uh, and quick to listen to, you know, right. quick to forgive, quick to listen. Yeah. So most of us are all, most people are a lot alike. Yep. There's just some things that people disagree on and they want to tell you all the things that we do disagree on and ex just exploit those things. But honestly, if you, I always, I always say this, it's like, if you walk down a street, most people will say, you know, they'll say hi to you. Yep. Most people will see, see that you're a person they'll say hi or how's it going. And you know, that's how 99% of people are, you know, they respect their fellow man, but they want to show you the 1% that the headlines, the things that are going to cause division, the things that are going to put us in categories, they want to show those things so that it looks yep. like that's how it is all around the world and all around this country. But the truth be told, if you walk out, go outside and you go around your town or your city, you'll see that most people are good. Most people respect you and you, and you respect them. So. so this week, my challenge to all of you is say hello to your neighbor. If you run into somebody in the grocery store, actually stop and talk to them and be nice to them. And the person, if there's somebody out there that uh, you have a beef with and you can make, and, and you can make that right, make it right. Because um, there's no use carrying around that baggage. And the other thing I'll challenge you all to is to be the gatekeeper. Be your own gatekeeper to who and what information gets into your mind and you know what you can decide what you consume what you consume i'll challenge you to be try to be grateful try to have a voice try to stand up for what you believe in um but do it respectfully do it respectfully you know if you want to if you want to argue with somebody do it respectfully if you want to speak your mind do it respectfully um next week will be a q and a so leave your questions down below, and uh, next week we're going to do a Q&A and talk about what you want to talk about, and then the following week we're planning to have a guest on. We've got, we've got some good guests coming up, um, and I think you're going to find it entertaining and enlightening, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something. And we appreciate 
the support. We appreciate the people that have subscribed uh, to both our channels. We appreciate the messages. We read all the messages. Um, it's hard we, to get. It's hard to get to all of them because yeah. we have two channels. We got Instagram. We got TikTok. We're trying to get back to as many of you as we can, but that time things it's hard. It's hard it to is. get to everybody. But uh, we really do appreciate every single one of you. I think. I think this is a. We love doing this. We love giving you guys value, and I hope you guys did get something from the show. And be sure to share the show if you got some value. Also. If you're listening to this podcast, Apple, Spotify, leave us a review, rate us, give us a yes. good rating because that just pushes us out to more people. And if you think that we drop a lot of value, we want to reach as many people as we can. So share it, leave us a review, leave us a rating, drop your questions down below. So next week we've got some questions to answer. And with that being said, have a great rest of your week, guys, and we'll see you back here next Friday.